everybody, welcome to another Cricut Craft Tutorial. Today we are going to make a lighted fairy jar. I apologize for my dog barking, she's just nuts. Um, so all we need to do this craft is just a couple of things. You're going to need a jar, the smoother the better, any size you want really. Um, some paint, I'm using sea glass paint by Martha Stewart Crafts, I'll put a link below for that. You're going to need a paintbrush, a soft bristled paintbrush, and then you'll need a vinyl sheet of some sort in any color you choose. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the lid off of my jar, and I'm going to probably peel this label. I don't know how well it's going to peel. If it doesn't peel off, no big deal. Nobody will notice it, but I'll peel it off really quick here for you guys. Um, so, no label. And then what I'm going to do is make sure all my jar lid parts are off. I'm going to flip it upside down. And I'm going to take a little bit of my sea glass paint, and you're going to want to shake that up a bit. And I'm going to squeeze it out onto my uh, wax paper. I just use this as a protective surface, but it also works really well as something just to kind of splooge your paint on when you're using it. Um, all you're going to do is just dip your brush in the paint, and you just want to just paint your jar. It's not a whole lot of, you know, doesn't take a lot to uh, do this craft. It's pretty easy. You could do this with your kids. Um, it's a great craft for little girls rooms. I've seen them done with like bugs and dinosaurs too for little boys, but we're going to do a fairy jar. Um, you're also going to need a string of fairy lights, which I will put a link below for the ones that I got on Amazon. They're very inexpensive and easy to use, and these make really great um, night lights for kids rooms. They make really fun um, gifts for children too, even adults. Um, I definitely am making this one for myself because we don't have kids. But all you have to do is just just paint your jar. So when we come back, I'll have the jar all painted. I'm going to let it dry for a few hours. Um, and then once it's dried, we may put a second coat on. We're going to see how it looks. This is going to be all up to just your style and how you want your jar to look. If you want it very... Um, opaque we'll probably put another coat on but we'll see how dark this coat goes like I said you don't want to put it on too too thick um, you don't want you know big runs in it and it's okay if it's a little bit streaky looking because that's just kind of how it's gonna look um, you can smooth out some of those streaks as you go if you've got you know big chunks of streak like I see I've got kind of a chunk going on there um, I'm just gonna uh, carefully spin my wax paper it's the other reason I use wax paper because once your jar got paint all over it, you really don't want to touch it. So I'm just going to use my wax paper and turn my wax paper. And then just put my paint on. So when we come back, like I said, we'll get this all set up. And I'll show you how it's going to come out. If we do a second coat, we'll go ahead and take care of that. And we'll let it dry. And when we come back, I'll show you how to design your vinyl pieces that you're going to put on here. So that it looks like there's little fairies playing in the jar. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put a second coat on this. I don't... Um, I don't particularly care for how opaque it came out. I'd like it a little bit more. So we're just going to add a second coat of paint. Again, this is optional. It just depends on either how you think you painted it the first time or also your own preference. Um, for me, I just sort of wanted it a little bit thicker. So I'm going to put the second coat on just a little thicker than I did the first. And then we're going to let it dry. This one I actually let dry overnight. So it dried for probably about 18 hours by the end of it all. Um, so we'll just get the second coat on and then we can design our fairies. We are ready to make our fairy for our fairy jar. So what I did is I went on Etsy and I'll put the link below to the fairy silhouettes that I have. And I um, got my download. So once you download you're going to end up with a zip folder that has your fairies in it. Um, for me, mine automatically unzips. I just use um, the program that's with my computer. But you'll need to extract your files. So I have nine fairies here. So all I'm going to do is uh, select all of them and click Extract. And it's going to ask me where to extract them to. And I'm going to extract them to my Cricut folder. Well, all that does is it makes it so that you can access your... SVG files. So we don't need to do anything else with that. We can just get out of that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to upload. We're going to upload our image. 
click browse and then in your Cricut you're gonna find where your fairies are um, I know which one I want to use so I'm just I know it's the first fairy so I'm gonna use this one so we're just gonna save it we don't have to do anything as far as removing the background on her or anything like that as you can see I have already uploaded all of my fairies but that's how you do it so we can look and see if there's something else that we want to use a different type of fairy but I think I like her so we're gonna insert the image I measured our jar and we've got about two and a quarter inches maybe two and a half to play with so I'm just gonna resize her down a little bit and then all we have to do is click make it this is why SVGs are super easy and super fun to work with so for her I'm gonna cut her on a custom setting because she's got really intricate wings and she's very very small so I'm going to show you guys how to do the custom setting before we go ahead and load our uh, mat into our machine. So in order to do that on your machine, if you have the Explore Air or uh, 2 or the 1, towards the right hand side you have that dial. You're going to set that dial to custom and hit continue. And what that does is where it says one set material, it's going to bring up an option menu. None of these are what we want. We want to use the washi tape settings. So I'm going to browse all materials. And I believe you can search. So if you know that it's called washi tape, you just search for washi and hit go. And you can either use the washi sheet or washi tape. Um, I'm going to try it on the washi sheet setting and see how it does. It's such a small piece that if it messes it up, it's not a big deal. So we'll come over here. I'll show you guys it cutting. And hopefully with any luck, it won't mess our project up. So this is where your dial is that I told you about, and it's set to custom, which is all the one all the way over to the left. So we're gonna insert our sheet. I'm just gonna use a brown because I don't use the brown vinyl real often. Um, it doesn't really matter what color vinyl you use because you won't see it on the outside of the jar. So don't worry too much about it. Go ahead and hit the go button, and it's gonna go ahead and cut. While it's cutting, um, you guys can get your jar ready. I'm going to use um, a ribbon to put around the top of it just to make it a little bit prettier, but there's the jar. Um, we have our lights, which I got these ones off of Amazon. I will link them below, but these are really fun. You can use them on all sorts of projects. They're battery powered and really small, so you can easily put the little top stuck, it, stuck to the lid of the jar. So as you can see, it's cutting out our tiny intricate pieces of our fairy's wings. Once it's done, we'll get it weeded, and then we can put it on transfer tape, and we will get it put inside the jar. All right, now that we've got her weeded, we're just going to apply our transfer tape, which for me, I use dollar store um, contact paper. You get a ton, and it's only a dollar. Um, I will say while weeding, I ripped one of her little loops, but it's all right. It will not be the end of the world. So we're just going to go ahead and peel her off of our transfer tape, or her backing, and then we're going to get our jar. So this is our jar, and I'm actually going to pull you guys back a bit so that we can see better. But I'm just going to take the lid off, and the lid has the two pieces. And all we're going to do is take our fairy, and you want to take her sticky side out, so sticky side out into your jar. And you're just going to fold her up a little bit so that you can kind of see. And for this, sometimes I do have to end up using something a little bit longer than my hand or my, my fingers because I can't always fit my fingers in the jar. So what I'll do is I'll put her on the edge of like a um, scissors. And then I'll just use my scissors. I don't know how well you guys can see this. But I'll use my scissors to kind of position her where I want her in the jar. You guys can use wider mouth jars for this. Um, the wider the mouth, the easier it will be to place your fairies. For me, I wasn't thinking when I bought this jar and decided to use it for this. Um, but you can also take, and this is the other thing I like, I can take my weeding tool and I'll just poke a hole, just a small hole in the transfer tape, and then I'll, oops, and I'll drop her apparently, I'll just poke a small hole in the transfer tape so that it hangs on my hook. And then I just sort of kind of fold her in and do the same thing. And this one sometimes works a little bit better. If I could keep it on the hole, we'd be doing great. But I'll just do this, and then I can put her all the way down in the jar without her 
falling off as easily as she did with the scissors. So all I do then is I just take the back end of my weeding tool and I just kind of rub her on. Again, if she's got bubbles and stuff, you won't notice it because she's gonna be on the inside of this jar. You just wanna try to rub her on so that she stays on. And then I'll use my weeding tool, the other side, the hook again, to peel off the transfer tape best I can. Sometimes this is not always the easiest thing to do with these jars because they are so skinny. But I try to do it as best I can here for you guys. And like I said, I'm just using the end of my weeding tool. You could use um, your spatula works pretty well. Um, I'll show you, see, see what else we got. The spatula, this guy. He works really well for this too because you can use the flat side of him and you can actually press her down a little bit better. And like I said, don't worry if there's bubbles in her, nobody will notice. This is not always the easiest thing to do. And you can use your spatula to start peeling that transfer tape off as well. And a lot of times I'll end up using my tweezers because I can't always get the spatula or the weeding tool to pull it off enough. But this is why I like all the Cricut tools, because they're handy for all sorts of things, not just weeding. So what I'm going to do is apparently use my left hand, because I can't do this with my, apparently I can't do this with my right hand either, Jesus. I can't do it with either hand at the moment, is get my tweezers around my transfer tape. And I'm just going to pull it off if it'll come off. Sometimes this is a struggle. So I'm going to struggle with this for a minute, and then I'll come right back. Okay, that is a perfect example of when I tell you it, not everything is always going to be perfect. So it took me a while to start, struggle that transfer tape off. But you can see the fairy, but what's going to make this fairy even cooler is these fairy lights. You can find these um, on Amazon, like I said, and I will put the link below. They come in a couple different sets. I think you can get like three, six, eight. Um, I actually use some of these at my wedding, but you can use them for lots of different items. So all you have to do is unwrap your lights here. I'm going to unwrap them. And I will apparently not untwist them. <laughs> so all you do is you just untwist them a bit. I might have retwisted them doing that. Oh, there we go. Now we're cooking with gas. They do twist them a lot. These They do it so they don't come apart, I guess, in the packaging, but sometimes it just makes it a little more difficult when you're trying to take them apart at home. Almost done. Okay. Once you have them untwisted, all you do is just kind of separate them a bit. Just kind of pull them out, and you're going to see they're just, it's just a copper wire. It's very thin, so be somewhat delicate with it. And then all I'm going to do is thread them into my jar. Just thread them into my jar. And I would tape this part, the top. Piece. I would tape this to the lid, but we're not going to do that because I don't need to. But there we have our fairy jar, and you can see how nicely you can see the Tinkerbell in there. Now you can move your lights around if you want, you know, more light on her or however you want. You can play with them as you wish, and then you just put your lid on. And I won't be able to put it all the way on because I didn't do the put the battery pack in but there you go and then like I said I'm gonna do um, a yellow ribbon around the outside and for this all I do is I just used some cheap ribbon I found at the Target dollar spot it's like um, scrapbooking ribbon and I'm just gonna peel it off here and for me I just like to tie a little bow and you don't get a lot on these little spools so it's just enough to make a cute little bow or just a little sash on them just to kind of dress it up a little bit. And I think on this one, try to do a little bow. <laughs> it snowed in Ohio, my hands are cold. So my little bow is not little bowing right now. <laughs> my hands are struggling, ladies. Hands are struggling. I know you all can feel my pain. Sometimes crafting is a struggle. Like right now, I am riding that struggle bus. I promise, normally I can do this way better. I don't know what, I don't know what is going on with me today and these, this bow, but 
Well, you get the idea. <laughs> so let me get you guys a better shot of this. Here is our finished fairy jar. Now you guys can always add whatever you want to this. You could add more fairies. Um, I've seen them done with just fireflies around them. There's a lot of really fun things that you can do with these. They make wonderful gifts for kids, for adults, for anybody. If you guys have any questions, please make sure you leave them below in the comment section. Also, if you have any requests for any more tutorials, please let me know below as well. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell because every time you do, it'll let you know if I uh, post a new video. And make sure you like. I hope you guys have a really fun time making this craft.